So I've really loved the insight lately that you can't be unfocused because when you're focusing on distraction or being unfocused, you're focusing on that. So another way of describing focus is just like what we're experiencing visually right now. So it seems when you focus that you choose a point to focus on. And there's no actual point, but focus is what allows you to choose a point. It's the very, like, allowing of the seeming point that you choose. But even when you do choose a point, there's a periphery or all the peripheral stuff going on. And there's no border from the point of focus to anything else. And you can't find the border of your visual field at all. So people say that vision is the most convincing uh, it's it makes us convinced that duality is real the most but to me <laughs> it's the easiest to see through as well um and so sometimes when we make like these distinctions they help us to sort of like see it creatively and then we kind of feel the resonance with it so because non-duality is not two i decided that it would be smart to break things into threes today because we all know that's going to work fantastically and i also wanted to explain why the law of attraction is saying the exact same thing as non-duality so another way to say non-duality is no exclusion there's no exclusion whatsoever. So just like I explained when we choose a point of focus, there's no actual like border or excluding anything else in our visual field from that. And that also, so the law of attraction and no exclusion is saying that um, in order to get something you believe <laughs> that you do not have or in order to experience something that you're not currently experiencing it you have to feel as if it is already there and so this is the actuality with non-duality and so often when we desire something and what at our core we're desiring is to feel better so everything we desire we think that it will make us feel better. And so we spend our lives continually chasing out desires, thinking that one thing's going to make us feel better. And it seems to for a while because the desire is gone and the thoughts that I don't have this are gone for a while. But we don't ever, don't usually <laughs> notice that it's the absence of those thoughts that something is missing. That is the actual happiness that is actually already there. So if you contemplate how love fits in with desire and how desire fits in with attraction and how it all fits in with resonance and curiosity, all these words I'm throwing in to try to expand a definition of love. So when we feel attracted to something or we feel love for something, there's a kind of focus that transcends duality. And I found this, um, this sort of like model and it's Gunjif, Gunjif, I can't say his name, but he's a philosopher and a mystic. And I will link the video below, but it's this exercise where you focus on your hand and so you you look at your hand and you focus on your hand and you give your full attention to your hand and then you disperse your attention to include the negative space around your hand to include the periphery to include the background of everything and so you kind of like your focus on your hand stays and stays as intensely but your awareness of everything else is included in this and then in this exercise, you want to arise <laughs> and how you do this, this is kind of where it gets a little tricky, but a feeling of love. 
And one thing you'll notice when you do this and you're really present is you'll really start to feel like your hand. You'll feel the energy of your hand. And so that's kind of the same thing. So you don't have to like evoke like, oh, I love my hands. This fingernail looks really nice today. You look awesome. You don't have to do that. But it's, it's like a, a, a feeling, like inviting feeling in. And so that is where like the focus sort of like intensifies and also disperses. And the same exact thing is happening when you take in a really deep breath. Let it out and this feeling just arises. The same exact kind of thing is happening. So you're sort of like splitting this into three stages, but really you're just like going into it and there's no three stages. And so <laughs> this is where it's really going to get, oh, there goes the goose again. <laughs> he says hi. This is where it's really going to get interesting. But I realized that the same exact thing happened when I lost my grandmother. And so here I have this form of this somebody who I really love and have loved. And it was so easy to see because I was wanting to know this. And like it was like all of this sort of knowledge was coming to me at the time that this happened. But it was like I, like I knew and I loved her my entire life as this form. And watching it dissolve in her awareness of me and like knowing what I was. She died a natural death, but her mental capacities like slowly faded. And I heard from an aunt that was taking care of her that she, there's like entire windows opened. Like someone died the week before and she had a conversation with them and like weird kind of things happened. But from my perspective, like losing her, all of a sudden she's gone. And like then it's just like this exercise, like there was my grandmother and now there's like she's gone. And when someone dies, it's tempting to sort of like do this and it's gone and sort of like be horrified by it. And then like this sort of love floods in and like seeing through that and seeing that that love for somebody was never ever lost but was the actuality of it the entire time is an amazing experience and it's something that everybody can have and this is how we should see transitioning or see death from now on so we can search with our vision, but our vision is always seeing. It's never actually searching. And so when we want something, when we want enlightenment, when we want understanding, when we want to find the truth, when we want a relationship, when we want to feel a feeling of love, it's all because we want to feel better. And I want to draw attention to how you can take feel better two different ways. So you can take feel better as like being able to feel things more clearly, having more awareness. Or you can take it as improving how you're feeling and feeling love over feeling um, a more negative emotion. And these two things are not at odds with each other. And I kind of laugh about this because it totally explains why do you feel bad or do you feel badly? Like that sort of argument in grammar. I know someone who's amazing with grammar and she like really wants to get everything right, but she says feel badly and it drives me crazy because it's like if you feel badly, that means like there's something wrong with your nerves. You're not feeling quite right. <laughs> but it's hilarious because really the two things are not at odds. So when you heighten awareness and you really want to see what's true, when you're really going into what you're perceiving, not just your thoughts about it, not just with like desires and things that aren't there and all sort of 
cloudy in thoughts about it, but you drop the thoughts and you actually like go into what you're seeing, the not only do you see better, but you you see love, you sort of feel love, this element of, of love comes in that sort of like transcends the senses and includes all of the senses. And so sometimes I think that you could apply this to our realization that what we are isn't really there. So just like with the hand exercise again, like we start our lives and it's all about us and we're the thing that we're taking care of and we're the thing that we need to make happy. And then like we learn about the the world and we learn that there it's not really all about us. And so we sort of like diffuse all of that. And then when we really, really like sort of merge us with the world, this feeling of love comes in. And that's sort of where self-love is not a narcissistic thing. It's not a focus on this, but it's an en like encompassing. It's non-dual. It's there's no exclusion anymore. And that's true self-love.